Welcome to the module covering the foundation of business math and Excel. We will start off pretty basic and get more advanced with each video. Feel free to fast forward or skip videos on content you have already mastered. You can take the quizzes to assess your knowledge to determine what you need to watch and what you can skip. If you are not comfortable entering a formula in Excel, or if you're not comfortable with absolute versus relative references, stop this video and go to the basic Excel videos and watch any videos you feel like you need to get caught up. In this video, we're going to create a budget. Open up the Excel workbook provided to you where you found this video and go to the budget tab. Pause the video here to open the file if you have not already, so you can follow along with me. You're going to want to complete the budget as I do, so you may need to pause the video multiple times. The only way you can learn Excel is by doing it. This first tab in the spreadsheet includes some shortcuts. These are shortcut keys I use frequently to make Excel faster. If you're not very comfortable with Excel, then you might want to just ignore the shortcuts and use your mouse. If you feel like you're ready to stop using your mouse and use your keyboard more, then print off this page and practice as we go along. Let's go to the first tab of the budget. There are actually two tabs that are going to be important for this exercise, the budget tab and the data tab. The data tab actually has the data that we need to fill in the budget spreadsheet. My budget is set up here much like an income statement has revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, and expenses. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the items here, but we'll dive deeper into those in the accounting module that you'll complete. So for now, just be comfortable with a general overview. As we saw here, the objective is to complete a budget for the first quarter of the year. So to do this, I want to get comfortable with the data that was provided. So let's look at that second tab. Here I have the months and I have monthly sales. Over here, my budget is asking me to pull in revenue. Revenue and sales are the same thing, it means the same thing. So revenue just reflects the sales that you have. Sales are the price of a good or service times the number of units sold. So let's say my company sells cars and each year we sell cars for $20,000. If we were to sell 50 cars, then I would generate a million dollars in revenue. That's just $20,000 per car times 50 cars. I've been given all of that data, so I don't need to calculate that here. I just want to show you what that $1 million actually means in this case. So I need to pull the data that's on this second tab over into my budget. I could just sell reference over to the data tab to pull the $1 million. That's fine, but there's one little problem here. Let's go back to the data tab. My data is set up here in a column. So it's January, February, March down in a column. But over here in my budget tab, I'm going to set up January in column B, February in column C, and March in column D. This is not a huge deal, and I can address it in multiple ways. First, I could sell reference each month separately. So I'm going to actually sell reference the word January here, so I label my column. And then I could reference over to the actual revenue for January. I could then do the same thing for February and reference over to the February sales. And then I could do the same thing for March. But in this case, I wouldn't be able to copy and paste the January data from column B over to column C and have it pull the February data. Because like we talked about in the basic Excel video, whenever I copy and paste a relative reference from one column to the next column, Excel is going to move that reference over. So here it was B2. When I copied and pasted, it moved over one to the right to C2. If I go back to my data tab, I can see that I don't have any data in cell C2, so Excel is pulling zero. And up here, where I had cell referenced January before, Excel now moved over one column to the right to this one million here, and that's what it's pulling. So like I said, we can manually enter in January and then manually enter in February, but everything that I do in Excel, I want it to be the fastest way possible. 
But I'm going to delete this data and show you a different way. The approach I'm going to use is the transpose table function in Excel. To transpose, I'm going to copy the table. If you're not comfortable with copy and paste, you may go back to the basic Excel videos. Um, but I'm just going to copy this data and then I'm going to right click here and go to paste special. And I'm looking for this transpose option. Uh, it kind of has an arrow there on that clipboard. Um, it also says transpose. So I'm going to use that transpose option. And I needed to copy from over here. So I'm going to do it again. I need to copy the data from over here, which I did with control C, or you could right click and copy. And then just go to a different column, and that's where I'm going to right click and select transpose. What transpose did was it took the data that I had in a column and moved it over to a row. I'm getting those number signs just because I need to auto fit the columns. So let's do that real quick. And now it gives me the data that I had here in the column over into a row. And then what I can do is go back over here, cell reference again to January, and then I can just copy down to that 1 million um, that's now pulling from over here. Now I'm going to go all the way through January real quick. Um, instead of just copying and pasting over to February, which I could do, and it's pulling the data correctly now because it's going from E1 to F1, so it's moving just to the right using what I had here in the rows. But I'm going to wait on February. I'm going to complete January, the whole column, and then format, make it really pretty, and then I'm going to copy over to February. So I'm going to leave January like it is. I know it's left justified, but I'm going to leave all that like it is and format it at the very end. So let's look at cost of goods sold and gross profit. You may not be familiar with these terms yet. Like I said, we'll go over these again in the accounting videos, but let me give you a brief explanation here. Cost of goods sold, which is oftentimes abbreviated COGS or COGS, is what it costs you to make or buy the inventory or goods I sold. For a car company, this is the cost of the materials like steel or the axle or tires or engines, along with the labor and machine overhead required to put that car together. Remember, revenue is the sales price times quantity of what I sold. So revenue is the value of what I sold but cost of goods sold is the cost I incurred for the item I sold. When I go to the data tab, I'm not going to see cost of goods sold here. Instead, I'm given gross profit as a percentage. Gross profit is actually presented in dollars, and it's calculated as revenue minus cost of goods sold. When I'm given gross profit as a percentage, it's usually called profit margin, I can actually calculate gross profit in dollars by multiplying revenue by the percentage. So here, I'm given gross profit as a percentage, but gross profit is embedded in this little sentence I have here. So if I'm over on the other tab, I can't sell reference over to it. So all I want to do really quickly is just type in 0.35, and I just need to change it to a percentage format, which I did up here in the number formatting. So all I'm doing here is just getting that 35% in its own cell. And then I'm going to go back over to the budget tab. So like I said, to calculate gross profit, I'm just going to multiply revenue by the percentage I was given for the gross profit margin. So it's 35%, click enter, and I get gross profit of 350000 Now that we know gross profit, we can back into cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is just revenue minus gross profit. Most often, when we are preparing actual financials, actual financial statements for something that already happened, we're going to know revenue and cost of goods sold, and then we'll calculate gross profit. Again, just revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. However, when we are budgeting, we don't know exact numbers, but we likely know what gross profit as a percentage of revenue has been historically and we can use that to back into cost of goods sold like we did here. So I'm just going to calculate cost of goods sold as revenue minus gross profit. 
If you're not comfortable with that being a positive number, it's okay to make it gross profit minus revenue, which makes cost of goods sold a negative number. Cost of goods sold is an expense, so having it negative makes sense. In the accounting module, we'll look at a lot of companies actually present cost of goods sold and expenses in absolute value. So whatever you're most comfortable with is perfectly fine. I'm gonna leave it as a positive and just know to make sure that I subtract that number from revenue in order to calculate gross profit. Now that we've finished revenue, cost of goods sold, and gross profit, I'm gonna stop the video here and in the next video, we'll finish out our expenses.